Before you listen to this BBC podcast, I'd like to tell you about something else you might enjoy. My name's Alison Hindle, and I commission audio drama and fiction for the BBC. It's a great privilege, because I get to unearth stories people love. You should see the books and scripts covering my floor, from new talent and established writers as well as classics. The BBC has such a rich history of making great audio drama. We're still the largest producer in the world. And the popularity of podcasts means we can share what we do with even more people. So if you like to lose yourself in a gripping audio drama or book, find your next listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music. Radio. Podcasts. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast, keeping you up to speed with, well, everything you need to know about our beautiful game. It's Friday, the 16th of August. I'm Phil Goodlad, and it's a good day to be a Kilmarnock fan. Here comes Armstrong then into the penalty. It comes ahead, it comes in. It's in! Yes! Come on, I'll do him the only goal! It's Joe Wright! In every action to their historic win in Tromso last night, no such luck for St Mirren though. Taylor's can't get rid of it, and it's an opportunity again, and it's now 3 1. Surely that's game over now. Una Hegebo, the substitute, gets on the end of it, slides the ball under the goalkeeper's legs. What will Stephen Robinson and his team have learned from their long awaited return to European football? And away from the continental glamour. It is Forbes! Oh, it's spectacular! It's unbelievable! Brandon Forbes with a, a goal of the highest quality! We'll turn our attention to domestic matters and preview a big weekend in the League Cup. The Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Sports Scotland. Great to have you along today. The house is full with guests for you. Scott McDermott from the Sunday Mail, chief football writer, no less. Laurie Finlayson, co-host of the Killy View podcast. And Mark Jardine, a BBC fan writer and co-host of the best themed and titled podcast out there, The Misery Hunters, the St Mirren podcast. Gentlemen, morning to you all. Morning. Morning, Phil. Good morning. Laurie, let's start with you as the co-host of the Killy View podcast. Uh, quite a morning to be a Kilmarnock fan. Yes, very much so, Phil. Um, I'm just delighted that um, that we've got ourselves into the uh, playoff of the of the Combs League, of course, setting up something of um, something of a glamour tie, you could say, against Copenhagen. I mean, that's that's very much what you what you hope for a, a tie like that when you when you qualify for these things, and you know. I'll be honest. I wasn't. I wasn't too, totally confident that we were going to that we were going to get through uh, last night after um, kind of struggling to um, to draw in the first leg at Rugby Park. But I mean, the performance last night. You know that that took real guts and courage. So credit to the team and bring on Copenhagen next week. Laurie, I'm. So excited to speak Kilmarnock this morning. I've completely forgot to do the headline. So uh, hold it for just a moment. We'll get more into the Kilmarnock, uh, the Kilmarnock win last night and indeed uh, St Mirren's defeat. Uh, firstly, though, let us go through uh, the Scottish football headlines. And your rights header was enough to give Kilmarnock a 1-0 win in Tromso and send them through 3-2 on aggregate to the Conference League playoff. They'll now take on FC Copenhagen. St Mirren's first European adventure, though, in 37 years is over. They lost 3-1 away to Bran Berg and it was 4-2 for the tie. Hearts will face Victoria Pizan in the Europa League playoff round next week after the Czech side overcame the Ukrainian outfit at Krevbas 3-1 over two legs. The Tynecastle side have also signed Colombian international left-back Andres Salazar on a season-long loan deal from Atletico Nacional. And one man leaving Edinburgh is the Hibs Dutch striker Dylan Vente. He's joining uh, Dutch side Zwoll on loan. So let's get back into the football. Laurie, we've touched on Kilmarnock. I guess from a St Mirren point of view, uh, uh, Mark Jarden, it was a night where St Mirren had the chance, but I guess if we're being honest, out of the two sides, probably Kil- Kilmarnock, we expected more from them, given given that they were up against Tromso, whereas St Mirren were up against the good Brand Bergen side. Yeah, I think Tromso were 
you know, not to put any take any shine off of Kilmarnock's win at all, which I think is is a, a major achievement. Tromso are sitting fairly near the bottom of the, the Norwegian league this season, and Bran are, are kind of holding on in, in third, so it puts it in a little bit of perspective. And we were competitive; we were in the tie until until really five minutes left out of two uh, two games where Bran had the majority of possession and, and certainly had the majority of the the kind of endeavour. So. To still be in the tie, I think, says a lot about the, the mentality of the side and we we're competitive and we just didn't want to go out on this kind of stage and not do ourselves justice. And I, I think the, the team gave absolutely everything. The the travel and support couldn't have been louder, couldn't have been in higher number for for either of the, the ties that they travel to and, and two of the most expensive cities in Europe. So I think uh, all in, um, you know, it hurts a little bit, but it's it's mostly pride at this point. Yeah, you're not suggesting there's going to be a lot of credit card statement bills being hidden at the end of the month, are you, Mark? After the uh, after the trips, couldn't possibly come in. <laughs> uh, Scott McDermott, uh, Sunday Mail chief football writer, um, paying for us if you would please your view of of really what Scottish football saw last night from from Kilmarnock progressing, but uh, but St Mirren falling at uh, at the hurdle. I think Mark touched on it, Phil. Just that competitive. Nature, no, I think for too long we've almost been kind of scarred by uh, you know, defeats in Europe for provincial Scottish clubs and ties that you know, from the outside you think they should probably go in and, and do better. And I think the key thing with these games, especially Kelly's win, obviously, is just the mentality. I just loved Derek McInnes' approach getting into these Tromso games, even after the first leg at Rugby Park when you kind of field for them a bit, you know, when they get the two each draw. McInnes' attitude was, no, we'll go there, we're going to go there and win. No, he came out with that kind of fighting talk interview after the, the first leg, saying that no, Troms will think, think they've won it, but we've we've got other ideas. And even in the build-up to the game, when he was asked no, whether Kelly were underdogs, he was having, having none of that. Mm. And I loved that, and I, th- I thought that was a real shift. I think it was a deliberate a deliberate thing by by McInnes to try and try and shift that mentality. And I think I think lots of Scottish clubs get into Europe should should take note of that. Yeah, I mean Laurie Finlayson, there was a bit of needle last night that Derek McInnes saying that that he felt at the end of last week's game at Rugby Park that Troms were overconfident that the tie it was now theirs for the winning. It, he made a statement last night, not just in Europe, but I think perhaps more importantly to his own players, given the stuttering start that you've had to the season. Yeah, I think that's. Uh... Fair comment, and uh, like Scott was was saying, I mean, I very much appreciated the comments from McInnes as well, both you know last week after the first leg and and last night. I mean, it's quite refreshing to hear a manager, you know, have confidence in their team, you know, going into a continental tie. Quite often, these ties are you know marred with pessimism both from fans, or from fans, players and managers, really. So it's really refreshing to, to, you know, see Derek McInnes go into it optimistic, believing in his team, having faith in them, and obviously um, they repaid that faith last night. And, of course, Joe Wright, you know, almost went from villain to hero, having got sent off um, on Sunday, and then... Well, he fought scoring the winner um, last night. However, it had gone down as an own goal. But mm. I don't think anyone is really all that bothered as long as well, we've got through. So who cares? Well, apart from the Trumps will defend it, of course. Laurie, I need to at this moment flag up our commentator on Sports on last night, Al Lammer. I don't know if he pre-writes his lines, but he said that Joe Wright had gone from sinner to saint with the uh, with the goal, although uh, Al's line is blown out the water by the fact that it was went down as, a, as an own goal. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing from Kilmarnock last night, Laurie, and, and who better to ask than you uh, following Kilmarnock uh, week in, week out, is that that looked like a Derek McInnes Kilmarnock side last night, um, as opposed to maybe what we've seen so far this season, especially the St Johnston defeat uh, last weekend. And, and uh, McInnes uh, told our reporter uh, Jane Lewis out in Norway after the game that the 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 problems that Kilmarnock had been facing in defence, he says the solution was in the building. It wasn't that he was trying to assimilate new players into a into a style or new 
signings to the club, they had to work through it. And he said that gave him more pride than anything last night because they managed to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think a kind of key to key to our success last night was actually um, kind of restoring the kind of four four two formation. As simple as that sounds. I mean, you know, in in recent weeks, Derek has been you know kind of toying with things and it hasn't really worked. Whereas, you know, playing four four two was kind of what brought us a lot of our success last season. And a lot of that success last season came from performances akin to last night where, you know, what well, it's quite gritty or we're digging in and getting the job done. And defensively it's been a it's been a strange one this season because it's it's effectively the same back four or back line a lot of the time. Only difference is really being um Robin McCrory now in between the sticks and well for a couple of games now, young Oliver Bainbridge on loan from Sunderland. And to be fair to him, he's now played two games of senior football in his career. One at Celtic Park, the other away at Tromso in Europe. Not bad, eh? Yeah. And, you know, it's a shame that we have to keep speaking about football as opposed to speaking about the good old four four two. I know it's labelled as dinosaur football, but isn't it great when it works mm-hmm. and, and we can all just say, yeah, we told you so. Uh, listen, quickly, uh, Laurie, uh, FC Copenhagen next up, uh, an away trip uh, for you first up next Thursday. Um, your thoughts on that one? I think it's quite an exciting time, Phil. I mean, we are very much underdogs. Maybe I'm going to go back to being pessimistic now, the typical Scottish football European attitude. We're very much underdogs, but you know what, these are the ties that you sign up for. You know, Copenhagen, aside with a fair bit of European pedigree, often seen in the, you know, in the Champions League and stuff. So getting the opportunity to, um, to play a team like that is is fantastic. And of course, um, Kelly will bring a brilliant travelling support to Denmark of that. There is no doubt. And then obviously, well, the following Thursday, I'm sure Rugby Park will be packed out to watch us play what what feels like something of a glamour tie. Yeah, and it was uh, it was great stuff from Kilmarnock last night. Back to their uh, back to their Derek McInnes best. Uh, Mark Jarden, I'm almost feeling apologetic for you because here we are speaking about about what a great night it was for him. Not so for St Mirren. Uh, the misery podcast. One would imagine that you're uh, you're on um, fully cranked up. I, I, I don't want to to use the P word because I think sometimes it's overused and it can be, feel a bit cliche and almost a bit tacky. But there is a lot of pride after what St Mirren has done in Europe this season. And I think there's no there's no sense in, in hiding from that. It's been 37 years since we've had a European campaign. It's been 44 years since we've won on foreign soil. I, I, don't, I don't know why we need to run from the fact that taking the second or third best team in Norway to you know, almost to the to injury time. You know, there's 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 not much to to hide from there. I, I was lucky enough to be at the Scotland Switzerland game at the Euros. Sorry, and without, you, were lo- you were lucky enough. What? what was, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to keep was it lucky about that. Latitude. Well, I got to see Scotland score <laughs> in, a, in a tournament in a, a summer of almost compounded one misery. So one to tell the grandkids. Yeah, if I was to be at one game, I think that was the lucky one to be at. Um, but having seen us score and seen that moment, and have seen us keep ourselves in it. To then take that, I mean, I wasn't in, in Norway last night, but for the, the folk that travelled to to see us go down early and then hang in there and push and push and, and get that, that Jakovita goal in the, the 75th minute, I think that's that's massive. I'm, I, I don't revel in mediocrity or anything like it, but I, I do try and hang on to the to the positives with, with these things. It's been a long, long road to get someone from, do you mean 2017 we were, 10 points adrift at the bottom of the second tier and it's been a steady relentless climb since then to the point where you know we're on a Swedish streaming site last night playing against you know uh, you know kind of proven European opposition and holding our own so you know yes with the Misery Hunters podcast it says more about the kind of general mindset and reaction of the the kind of Paisley public as opposed to to our outlook on things we are sore but not um, disheartened yeah you know you've made it when you're uh, searching Swedish uh, download sites last night to try and watch <laughs> your team in action. Um, <laughs> I've got a thing. 
Stephen Robinson, after the game, said something that I, I, I pricked my ears at, and I thought, yeah, that just about sums it up. He says, we want more of this. It's as if this has whetted the European appetite for St Mirren. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, this is the, the morning after a couple of Scottish sides have, have, have had a, you know, a kind of reasonable European night-ish. And it, it's Stephen Robinson and Derek McInnes we're, we're talking about. You know, St Mirren and Kilmarnock aren't two of the trendier sides in the division. They're certainly not two of the richer sides in the division, but they both have managers who have instilled a real closeness in their dressing room. They've got a real tight-knit, settled squad, and they make probably more than the some of their parts. They, they play above themselves. They, they get consistent results where you might expect them not to. Kilmarnock, you know, it was the games between ourselves last year that had Kilmarnock finishing above us and, and not much else. We, we both kind of had very, very consistent seasons. And, you know, that's not by accident. I think I think that's the way that both clubs have invested and the way that both clubs are run and that's what they want. And assuming that we keep Stephen Robinson, I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. We've signed well over the summer. I, I, I don't think it's ever happened in our history, at least not in my recollection, that we've lost a right back like Ryan Strain, who's had international honours and has been so popular and gone out and replaced them with Sean Rooney. You know, a, a first team ready... You know, his last memories of Scottish football are scoring two winners in um, cup finals. Like that, that, That's not a kind of regular occurrence for, for St Mern. So I think that kind of says where we are just now. So two ties in Europe. We didn't embarrass ourselves. There was no Conus Key or Sligo Rovers moment. Sorry, Laurie. Um, okay. <laughs> but we're just hoping that, you know, this, this carries on. And if we can keep the momentum going that we've got, then there's no reason not to, to expect or, or hope it. You're going to have to change the name of this podcast. The Misery podcast, uh, I, I don't think, fits the brief this morning. Um, yeah, I'm uh, miscast, I think. Scott, just, just very quickly, because I, I just want to look ahead to the weekend, but but just where we're at with Scottish football in Europe, is this where you expected the sort of the the the, the, the coins to, to have dropped with Rangers getting into the Europa League, dropping up the Champions League, qualifying, Kilmarnock going through, through St Mirren not? Listen, it's a massive blow for Rangers, Phil. Let's not get away from that. I mean, they, they'd have fully expected to get to the, the playoff round, I would have thought, at least. In terms of the other two clubs, listen, it'd have been nice for St Murn, obviously, to go one step further and get to that, that playoff round themselves. But as the boys have discussed, I mean, nobody's, I don't think MD's disgraced themselves. Even Rangers the other night, as much as it was a, a crushing result for them, though there was mitigating factors, obviously, with the red card. Um, they really could you know, legitimately claim they were. Uh, it was it was pretty unfair on them at the time. But no, nah, listen. As I say, these you no know, St. Murn and Kelly can hold their heads up high, and especially for Kelly getting into the Copenhagen tie, as we touched on earlier. I don't think Derek McInnes will be going in moaning about budgets and you no know, thinking this is as far as as far as we can go. He, he'll think there's a chance. Mm. Um, I think it was 10 years ago, McInnes was in charge of Aberdeen and they went to FC Groningen in, in Holland and won and got a terrific result for Scottish football. He'll be looking for, for something similar in this tie as well. Let's then look ahead because it's the League Cup second round this weekend. Uh, on Saturday, Dundee, they welcome Airdrie to Danes, Ross County travel to Spartans. Uh, Scott McDermott, Aberdeen hosting Queen's Park. It's their first game without Bojan Miofsky. Um Speculation that Aberdeen may bring in somebody to lead the front line before this game or might wait until the end of the transfer window. I guess it'll be life continues, but it'll be a strange return for fans to Pataudry without their talismanic striker that's led them for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, of course it will be. I think even for the last few weeks, Phil, there's been an acceptance among the Aberdeen support that, that he was going to go. Um, I think certainly in the last game, he was he was on the bench and only, only come on late on. Um, look, they've got money in the bank. Now, I'm sure they're going to sign another, another striker, certainly before the transfer window closes. And I don't think it will take away from the, you know, the brilliant start that Jimmy Tillin has has had um, at Aberdeen. Don't get me wrong, without taking anything away from him, I think the I think the fixtures at the start of the season have been have been quite kind to him. It's been a nice run he's had, knowing the League Cup and even the the first few league games. Obviously, with St Mirren losing losing up there, but it's been a nice run of fixtures for him. And I, and I think this is another one. I fully expect him to go and beat go and beat Queens Park at home, get into the quarterfinals. And that would cap a, 
a terrific, a terrific start for him as manager, despite uh, despite Mayovsky's exit. Uh, Mark Jordan Hart's travelled to Falkirk. That could be a cracker. I mentioned uh, Dundee uh, welcoming Airdrie, Queens Park at Aberdeen. Do you see any shocks? Uh, this weekend in the uh, in the league cup, having played Aberdeen, and it sounds it sounds ridiculous having lost in the way we did. That was a you know a, a tired and and fairly kind of broken up St. Man squad, and I think we gave as good as we got in the first half, and and then just capitulated a little in the in the second. I can imagine a, a more rested team could probably wind that that side up a little bit, and without Mayovsky, I, I I don't I don't think soccer's the answer. I, I thought Peter Ambrose looked positive, but you know I, I, I certainly wouldn't. I think you're you're right, Scott. That the fixture list in terms of who's played them and when, I think, has maybe been a little bit favourable. Do and you see Queens Park doing anything this weekend? Potentially. Pot- I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in their <laughs> in their side this season, but they're you know they're obviously of means now. There's there's players in that squad that might not otherwise be in in a Queens Park squad. I wouldn't. Um, no, I, I certainly wouldn't bet against them. Censor at Dundee United, a rested United side against a European weary travelling Saints squad. Do you see anything there that you might not like? That you, that you might re-engage the title of your podcast? <laughs> there's, there's every chance. Um, I think any any tiredness or fatigue will be completely blown out of the water by the desire to get one over Jim Goodwin. Um, you know, Saints hero as he is. Um, so petty, Mark. So petty. <laughs> Scottish football. I don't know what you want from. <laughs> I think the Falkirk, I think the Falkirk Hearts tie feels interesting because you know you're talking about potential shocks. I mean, Hearts should go there and and win, but you know, Falkirk under John McGlynn at home, they've had a really good start to the season after promotion. I think they'll they'll fancy their chances. Obviously, Hearts had a disappointing result at Dens Park, um, and they'll be looking to bounce back for that. But just looking at the Saturday fixtures, I think Falkirk Hearts potentially. There could be a wee surprise there. That's going to be a really interesting time. And Laurie Finlayson, from a Kilmarnock point of view, you're at Motherwell. Um, from the highs of uh, of Thursday night um, to the League Cup this weekend, is that one that you look forward to or is there an asterisk with the travelling and with the games that's been thick and fast so far for Kilmarnock this season? I mean, it's best not to use the, to use the excuse of Europe. I mean, it's not... It's not an excuse. I mean, some fans have accused the um, Derek McInnes of that, you know, with some of his comments after a league game. So it's best not to use the travel as, as a bit of an excuse. However, now I'm maybe going to go and fall into a trap and do it. It, do, it doesn't make things, you know, straightforward. And of course, Morrowell is not, not an easy tie, especially when you consider from being in Europe, you know, Kilmarnock are a seeded side or were a seeded side in that draw. So to get an away trip to Morrowell is actually fairly fairly challenging considering we were seeded. However, I would still be hopeful that we can go there and get a result. Obviously I don't know necessarily where we'll be um where we'll be fitness wise. I mean Kilmarnock um just arrived back in Scotland in the early hours this morning so they were they were flying straight back after the game. So hopefully um hopefully we're not gonna to be too fatigued come Sunday afternoon. And the uh, the weekend's fixtures in the League Cup rounds off with uh, Celtic at home to Hibs. You can keep up to date with, with all the action from what is another busy weekend in uh, in League Cup football across BBC Radio Scotland and at the website. Listen, that's all we've got time for. My many thanks to Scott, to Mark and to Laurie and thank you for listening. Listen, answers on a postcard, please, to uh, to Mark Jarden at the Misery Hunters podcast. Uh, new ideas for their uh, their podcast, new title after the uh, the wonderful happiness that's been exuded this morning from them. Mark, um, you will be inundated with, uh, with with new ideas to how to rename the podcast. I can assure you, um, misery's never too far away. So <laughs> it'll all be back. It'll all be angry at some point. League Cup this weekend. We'll have the Misery podcast on next week for you. There, there, there we are. Uh, as I mentioned, Sports Sound on Radio Scotland, bringing you all the action throughout the weekend. And of course, the Scottish Football Daily podcast is out every day. So make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to so you don't miss out. Uh, I'm Phil Goodlad. For now, though, enjoy our beautiful game and we'll talk again soon. 
This is the shocking moment English football has been dreading. My name is Moses Swebu and I used to be a professional footballer. But then I got in deep with organised crime and became a match fixer operating in the English league. A match-fixing investigator has highlighted two matches he says appear to have suspicious betting patterns. How honest are you going to be with me? This is 100%. Join me for Sports Strangers Crimes Presents Confessions of a Match Fixer. Listen on BBC Sounds.